What's up everyone, welcome to Kai's channel. Today we'll be reviewing this, the Ever Unit 01 from the Dyna Action series. Now this Dyna Action is a Bandai new series featuring the Ever on a big scale of 40cm tall. Aside from being just big and tall, we'll be seeing if there is any other aspect that's worth getting this. Originally, I wasn't planning to get this at all, as there doesn't seem to be a lot of gimmicks or accessories for this. However, as a reviewer, I believe that I should really give this a chance for any new series before we decide on its fate of continue buying or disregard it completely. So with that, let's get started. So just like any new product line, we're gonna start off with the box first. Now the box is extremely huge because the Ever Unit one right here, it's 40 centimeter tall, and that's why the box is going to be bigger in order to contain it. And so, just to be warned, this box is really big. Now the front cover you have is the unit one right there, and then at the back, on the background, you have a faint open mouth unit one's head right there. And then there's the logo, the Dyna Action, and then Ever Unit One right there on the bottom left corner. Now this cover is actually a pretty unique, where you can actually open it up, held by a magnet to close it, and once you open it. You can see that with the transparent film, you can see the unit 1 inside. And at the back of the cover, you can see that there's some kind of introductions for the movable joints, as well as other parts that they have as a gimmick, which we'll go through anyways later on in this video. So let's take it out of the box and see how it is. So coming right out of the box is the first layer. Now the first layer, as you can see, consists mainly of the main body, which right here in the center looking really sharp and nice. And then on the left side, you can see that there's an extra antenna, which you can use as a backup in case you broke the one attached. And then underneath it, you got four additional sets of hands that you can switch onto it. And on the right, you have the open shoulder compartment gimmicks that you can replace on the main body. And then you got the pallet rifle right underneath that. And at the bottom, you can see it's the iconic progressive knife. And not sure if you can see it, but there's a little tiny little figure right there next to the progressive knife. That's supposed to be the pilot. That's supposed to be on scale according to the anime. And I'll show you just how small it is later on in the videos. So that's the first layer. So next is the second layer and also the last layer. You can see right in the center we have is the base of the display stand which is semi-transparent and then there's some design onto it. And around that you can see the umbilical cord which on the right side is the charging adapter that plugs into the unit one and then the other side is just a black connector. And right at the bottom you have is the supporting arm that connects to the base stand and then you have this clip on the left side. And that's it with the second layer. All right, let's take all these out and go through them one by one. Let's start off with the accessories and armament first, as there is actually not a lot. We first have the iconic pallet rifle, which is exactly the same as it is in the anime, as the entire set is actually based off of the movie version, and it's not a redesign like the metal build. It is mainly a dark green and has a dark gray on the top with a minor details and a very apparent metallic color for the tip of the barrel and also at the end, followed by an orange strip. Also, there aren't any gimmicks on this rifle. The second is the progressive knife. Again, it is the same as it is in the anime. It has a dark brown for the handle and a metallic black for the blade body, and a silver as the edge, along with a plastic red strip as well. The knife can be folded to a 90 degrees so that you can actually store in the shoulder compartment, which I'll show you later. Next, we have is the umbilical cord, which consists of a matte gray and a silver handle followed by a black soft rubber tube which the other end can be connected to the base of the stand. Now as for the base stand which is a semi-transparent with multiple white and red line design on it. Also on the front, you have the Evangelion 01 test type logo right there on the front center. While on the back, there's the EVA 1 logo that's on the counterpart on the back. Now the base can actually be split apart into two pieces, although I'm not sure for the reason for this gimmick because the back piece is the only piece that you can put the supporting arm onto it. So definitely not sure why you are able to split it up on it, as it doesn't really serve much purpose. Now the supporting arm and the clip are also transparent in color, and both look and function are very similar to the metal built one. And last we have is this minifigure of the pilot Shinji that is in complete black and so small that's almost unrecognizable. 
and it is said to be a 8 millimeters tall. However, it's very small that it's very easy to lose, so just be careful not to misplace this. And if you put it up onto the zero one, that's like a size of an ant to us, so very very small. Now to the main attraction, the main body. The overall looks is really great as it is it's right off the anime with the plastic purple all over it along with the gloss plastic green as the secondary color. And for the small areas, it's in orange. Now the head looks exceptionally awesome with the shiny gold eyes painted and also the mouth, it's in silver which are the one and only parts that they, in the entire body that has those colors. Just from the look, you can't really see much die cast component other than the black chest on the front and also the knee and ankles joints and also the three black plates on the back. And that's it. The other die cast components are said to be within the inner bone structure so you can't really see it but you can definitely feel it on the weight. Movement wise, this piece is pretty agile. The head can obviously rotate sideways and it can be tilted upward and downward quite a bit. As for the shoulder, the arm can be raised up a little bit higher than horizontal but not any further as the shoulder part hinders it. The elbow can be moved only to a 45 degrees which I think this is much less than what I've expected given it the size of this they could definitely make it better. However, this is what we got. Not to mention that they didn't even try to hide the ball joint right here to make it look better and it absolutely looks quite bad with the ball joint as the elbow. As for the torso, it can bend quite a bit and it's actually pretty awesome at the angle that it can bend on it. You can actually sit it up right almost to a 90 degrees and it's actually pretty awesome that it can do that. And as for the thigh, it can swing almost all the way up vertically and the knees can bend all the way at the back, touching the back of the thigh. But honestly, I think the arms should be able to do just as much as the knee can do right here. Not sure why they didn't do that. Now, as for the ankle and also the tip of the toe can actually swing forward and backwards. And that's it. One thing I noticed though, although it can actually move quite a bit for this piece, the legs are actually not very strong and there are like chicken feet that wobbles around if you move it. So if you want to display it, be sure to set it firmly or use the supporting arms of the display stand. Otherwise, there might be a great chance that it's going to fall over and might damage it. So just be careful on that. As for the gimmicks, there's actually very little on this piece. The mouth can actually be open revealing the inner teeth that I personally don't like it because it resembles human teeth instead of a block-like robotic teeth. Now the current human teeth look looks absolutely weird and I kind of gross out from this. So if you're like me who doesn't like this teeth, you can actually push the teeth downwards to hide it underneath leaving the robotic teeth out which looks so much better. Now is it just me or do you guys also think that the human teeth actually looks really gross? As for the second gimmick, it is the two side chest pieces that you can open up and show the black die cast chest piece that's right there in the center. Now I think this gimmick is actually good if only they have an interchangeable piece for the chest so that you can show the red core unit inside but unfortunately they didn't so it actually makes this gimmick quite useless. As for the third gimmick, it's actually the shoulder piece that you can switch with another piece so that it can act as if the shoulder compartment is open and you can place the progressive knife to make that finishing look on it. Now this piece can only replace on the left shoulder as the shoulder piece is actually asymmetric. Honestly, I was hoping that they can have this gimmick to be built into it, making it that you can open up directly and instead of an interchangeable piece like it is right now. Given that the size and also the price of this piece, it should be doable. So definitely disappointed at this part. Lastly, it is the knee that you can actually move independently from the leg so that when you move, the knee guard can actually move up as well. And that's it with the gimmicks. In conclusion, what do I think about this piece? Now this piece looks really great with the size of it being a 40 centimeter tall ever unit one and also the mobility of the joint is absolutely amazing. The color is also quite good although it's actually in plastic most of it and there's actually not much in detail which is supposed to be something that comes out right of the anime so definitely lack of details on here. But despite all of that I must say that the lack of gimmicks and also the accessories make this piece quite a disappointment especially when it's not cheap as well at a price of 19,800 yen. Not to mention that the human inner teeth just 
grossed me out again. Now this piece, from what I think, is actually just basically an upscale of the Robot Tamashii version and added some die cast in the inner structure and on the front as well. Kind of quite forceful when they're doing it. And then they're asking for such a high price for it. So with that, I would actually rate this piece in 6 out of 10. Honestly, with this price, you can actually get a metal build with it and have so much more fun than getting this piece. Unless you specifically want a 40cm tall Ever Unit 1 as a display, otherwise I strongly don't recommend this piece for anyone. You're probably better off getting the Robot Diamond C version, which is definitely a lot smaller but cheaper at a one-third of the price of this piece. And gimmicks-wise and accessory, they're just about the same. So definitely think twice before getting this piece if you really are looking into it. So that's it with today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and find it useful. Feel free to leave your questions, thoughts, or comments in the comment section below. And don't forget to support me by hitting that like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.